Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So recently around my stream, I've been noticing more and more people coming in and saying that they're new to the game and are asking some really essential questions. Now with the release of DE, there's obviously going to be more players interested in learning Age of Empires 2, uh, but it's such a massive game that it's hard to know where to start sometimes. So I decided to put together my top 10 tips for any beginner player that's looking to get better at Age of Empires 2. And before we hop right into the video, I want to say that this video is edited by Colin AOC. I'm going to leave a link to his YouTube channel uh, in the description. He's an awesome guy with some awesome content, and I highly recommend you guys check him out. Without further ado, let's hop right into the video. So at the course of an Age of Empires 2 game, you're going to need to do a lot of actions. These actions include making villagers, making units, and making buildings. There's a couple ways to go about this process with various degrees of speed and efficiency. The first thing you can do is to do everything using just your mouse. This is the most basic way to do stuff and also the most you know, inefficient. So I'm gonna go ahead and click my town center and then click the make villager uh, icon. That's the easiest way to make a villager yet also very slow. Same thing for building. I can click build and then I click a house and then I can click where I want it. Obviously, this is very slow, and you're not going to really want to do everything using just your, uh, your just your mouse. So, you know, what's your alternative? Which is simply to use hotkeys. Hotkeys can do the same thing using keyboard clicks instead of your mouse. So, for example, I want to do, you know, my building. I click my hotkey, and then I make a house, and then I can just place it using my mouse. So, using a combination of keyboard clicks and mouse clicks, I'm able to execute these simple tasks much quicker. For example, if I want to make a few houses, I can, you know, make the hotkey for house, then hold down shift and make a bunch of houses like this. I'm not going to go through all the hotkeys in one video because that will simply take too long, but my advice is to learn the standard ones first, I'm assuming you're completely new to the game, and then simply, you know, add one or two different ones that you feel more comfortable with um, and try to just adjust the hotkeys as you go like that. I'd recommend you guys learn the building hotkeys like build a house, build the barracks and build a farm first because those, those are the ones that you use every game. So like I said, learn the standard hotkeys and then modify them one at a time just to not overwhelm yourself. As far as copying a pro's hotkeys, I'd advise against it because it, everyone's hotkeys are pretty much personalized and are only good because that person is used to them. There are different setups and hotkeys don't make you a good player. So just make sure to learn your you know ones that are comfortable for you and ones that help your gameplay out and not to just blindly copy someone else's. Learning boards is an essential skill for any Dark Age because you're pretty much required to do this twice a game because on any standard map you get off with two boards close to your town center. The way to make use of these boards is to lure them into your TC town center and kill them right underneath so your villagers can gather in a very efficient manner. So there's two ways to lure a board in, the, in you know, Definitive Edition and the first one is to hit the board only once and then run away. The second way is to hit it twice. So the first way we hit it once and we're going to run away. We're gonna then shoot it with our bills at home and then kill it and hunt it underneath our town center. There it is. Notice what happened there. The boar went for the other bills that hit it, or you know, the second bills that hit it. This is because we only hit the boar once. If we do the same test, this time hitting it two shots with our first villager, you're gonna notice something different happens. Let's go ahead and send our villager forward. Right. <coughs> I'm going to hit it twice and then pull our villager back. Now, notice if you take four shots with a uh, unlumed villager, your bill will die. So definitely be careful not to take too many hits. Regardless though, <clears throat> we're going to bring this one in and we've hit it twice. So now when we hit it with our bills gathering at home, notice how the boar is still chasing the one that we set it to you know, target in the first place. And this is because we hit the boar twice. So the conclusion of this little test is that the boar will retarget the, you know, the second person to hit it uh, and will then chase that target forever. So make sure to hit the board twice, in my opinion, if you want to just guarantee your borderlers to be clean. Uh, if you hit it only once, just be aware that there is that risk that it goes after a weak villager who hits it the second time under your town center. So just definitely keep that in mind when learning your boards. With so many different units in the game, it's hard to know which units to make in certain situations and what upgrades to get to make them even stronger. Let's take a look at a basic unit here, the Militia. Uh, he is a melee unit with 4 attack. You can tell he's melee because he has no range option that we will see in a second. He has 40 hit points. Hit points are available on any uh, unit and it just tells you how much life he has. And then he's got his attack stat, so he's got 4 attack. That means that every time he hits, he does 4 base damage. Then he has his armor stats. 
this is split into two sections. The first one will be his melee armor, and the second one will be his pierce armor. I forgot to mention that for the attack stat, you've got two different types of attack. You've got melee attack, and you've got a ranged attack, or a pierce attack. So for our unit here, since he has no range stat, he is definitely going to be a melee unit, therefore dealing melee damage. So for example, if two militias were fighting, they'd do four attack each, and they'd hit each other with zero armor, that means that each hit they do will do four damage. On the contrary, if he was getting hit by a range unit that does four damage, he would only take three damage per shot because he has that one pierce armor. Let's now compare it to an archer here, 30 uh, hit points. For attack, remember, since he has a range, this is going to be a pierce damage. His armor is going to be 0 and 0. And then finally, this is his range, and he has full range. That means he can hit from 4 tiles away. One tile would be where he's standing, and then you count 4 tiles, and that's how far he can range. So now that we know a little bit more about our units, and what kind of information we can get just by clicking on them, let's talk about some of the different unit classes available to us, to be able to determine what kind of upgrades we need to get at the blacksmith to enhance our units in combat. The four main classes are infantry, with the militia as we've seen before, the cavalry unit, the foot archer unit, and the cavalry archer unit. There's of course one more, which is the cheat unit. Now I know I am missing some uh, you know, different classes in this video, and I'll take care of those in future guides when I go into some more advanced uh, stuff. But for now, these are the four basic classes that we will definitely talk about here. So at the blacksmith, we've got five options, and let's go through each and every single one of them just to see what kind of, you know, the bonuses they give our units. The first one will be our cavalry armor. Notice how it gives us cavalry armor, plus one normal and pierce armor. Infantry armor, melee attack, ranged um, attack and range, and then finally archer armor. So if we go ahead and get our cavalry armor, this will affect only our cavalry units, giving them plus one melee and plus one uh, pierce armor. Finally, infantry uh, armor, same thing, plus one in both melee and then plus one in ranged. Let's get our forging here, our infantry and cavalry plus one attack upgrade. Notice how this affects both infantry and cavalry units to get each plus one attack. Let's go ahead and get fletching now. This will give our archers plus one range and plus one attack. Same thing for the cavalry archer. Now notice how even though we got the cavalry armor, our cavalry archer did not get any armor. This is because this unit belongs to the archer class more so than the cavalry class. And there, therefore, when we get the archer armor, that is when he will get the plus one armor and not the cavalry. So as you can see, there are some kind of weird things like that that could happen when talking about certain units and what kind of class they belong in. There are a lot more complex issues in this uh, kind of topic that I will definitely cover in future videos. So don't worry, I didn't miss anything, but this is just you know the most basic things for new players. And with this knowledge, you can cover most units in the game. So the last thing I want to cover in this video is the fact that there are some hidden multipliers at work with some uh, units in regards to particular situations. Now, this creates something which is called counter units. So if I have a unit that has bonus damage against another particular unit, I can say that my unit counters that other unit. Now, it might sound a little bit more confusing when I talk about it. However, it's really quite simple in practice. Let's show you guys an example of the pikeman versus a cavalry unit. And then we'll talk about, I'll give you one more example about another counter unit in the game. So let's take a look at the pikeman, for example. He's got 55 uh, hit points and he's got four attack with no armor. Comparing that to the long swordsman with nine attack, also zero armor. Remember, this is melee and then this is pierce uh, armor, which is irrelevant in this case. And then 60 life, 60 hit points. So let's go ahead and fight the two of them and see what happens. So I'm going to get the first hit. But as you can see, it's not really going to matter because the long swordsman is simply just stronger than my pikeman. And I'm going to end the fight losing my pikeman and only dealing 20 damage. Now obviously this was not a good trade, however let's take a look at this different scenario here, where I have a pikeman as well, this time against a knight, which is also very strong, uh, and even stronger than the long swordsman again on paper. He's got 10 attack, 2 uh, melee armor, and 100 hit points. Let's see how our pikeman stacks up against the knight. Alright, so as usual, I will get the first hit here. And as you can see, I'm doing way more than the 4 damage that was advertised on our pikeman. In fact, I am doing a whopping 24 damage per hit. I still lose my unit, however, he's left with only 4 hit points. So what's really happening here? Well, basically, my pikeman is doing more damage to mounted units, to cavalry units, and this is what I call a hidden bonus, and this is what we say, you know, our pikeman counters cavalry units, our pikeman counters cavalry units, 
And um, so just be aware of this in game that certain units do way better against other units um, because they might have some hidden bonuses available that are not very <clears throat> obvious to the naked eye. I'm not sure how you're supposed to figure out these bonuses per se without just more experience and maybe trial and error. Uh, but I will give you one more example to take home with you guys, which is the Skirmisher and in regards to the Archer. The Skirm does way more damage to Archer units than it would to other units in the game. So that is another example of a unit countering another. So our Skirmisher countering an Archer. That's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Remember, this is my top five tips for newer players, and it's not fact, simply my opinion as to what you guys should learn when newly picking up this game. Also, Age of Empires 2 is way more complex than anything I can cover in a simple video, so definitely make sure to get out there and practice and play for yourself to see what kind of new things you can learn. Also, I recommend you guys check out other tutorials or guides uh, that are not only made by me, but just other content creators in general over Twitch and YouTube. There's plenty of great information and great content out there that are just waiting for you guys to grab it. So definitely make sure to look around and see what kind of information you guys can learn uh, just by you know digging around and seeing what's, what else is out there. If these tips didn't apply to you, if you guys are maybe a beginner, intermediate, or even an advanced player, I'm going to make a separate video for each of those categories coming up. So a top five beginner tips, top five intermediate tips, and a top five advanced tips. So uh, definitely make sure uh, you know, to leave a comment on what you guys would like to see featured, what you guys would like to see me talk about, uh, and I'll make sure to get to it in future videos. Uh, but this is just, you know, a new style I'm trying out for YouTube. I hope you guys did enjoy it, and I hope you guys uh, will support this kind of content that I'm making. Until next time, peace.